What's poppin'? Next time, don't hit it that hard. But come on in, come on in. All right, so today we're gonna do something pretty fun. Welcome to my place again. And uh, yeah. Today, I'm not the star of the show. The star of the show today is <gasps> Matt Cho, my cinematographer. So I'm gonna be teaching him how to program. So you guys ready? It's, it's gonna be pretty basic, cause uh, how, how much how much do you know? Nothing. Are you sure? Yeah. Nothing, nothing at all? Nothing. But you wanna get to Stanford, right? Yeah. CS, right? Let's do it. <sighs> all right, 30 minute session, because we can only <laughs> record for 30 minutes. Okay. All right, let's start. No. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna read my notes, but pretend you don't see my notes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess the, okay. First question: How much programming do you know, or do you even know what is programming? Programming is what makes phones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh wait, can, can you tell me about yourself a little bit? For AK, how old you are? I'm um, like, 16. I go to go to. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm in high school. Liner. Yeah, well, I DM'd him and then now I'm making videos with him. But yeah. That's about it. So, yeah, Matt is indeed 16 and he's probably the best cinematographer I know, which is great because when you're 16, you're pretty cheap. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I'm fucking expensive. Yeah, he just I, doesn't pay anything. Yeah, I just don't pay anything because he's because he's a, he's a fanboy. But I, I see the, in, the investment, you know. Potential. 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 But yeah, it's okay, because I'm going to sell video courses soon. So I'm going to be making money. You better buy them. So then I, I can pay you. So I can pay you. All right. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want you to get into Stanford. Yeah. <laughs> so you could be closer to where I live. So we can make more videos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't care if you have like a successful career or not. So I guess one thing that I want to talk about is that uh, w when people think about programming and coding, they think about just making websites and stuff like that, you know, it's cause, um, cause whenever I hear about coding, they always say like, oh, the first thing you learn should be HTML and CSS. It's like, yes, but first of all, those aren't even coding languages. Did you know that? No. <laughs> no, actually? <laughs> I knew that. Oh, you knew that? Okay, okay, so you know your shit. So yeah, so you usually think about that, but it's actually not even coding. Like coding is basically the art of automation. The whole point of coding is to, what did I say? <laughs> Delegate tasks to a machine rather than doing it yourself. So they can do it automatically. What else did I write? And how do you tell them to do things? You give them very, very precise instructions. And those instructions is basically your code. All right, so are you ready to learn some fundamentals? Yeah. Okay. First function we learn that is already made, like you're not gonna write this function, it's called print. Okay. For example, drum is dope. Okay. And then what happens when you run this, you get drum is dope, right? So this thing in between print is a string, meaning it's words or mm -hmm. like characters. And you could also put numbers. And then this function is smart enough to print different things. You know, okay, cool. So try it yourself. Try to print um, like, hi, my name is Macho. Yeah, so that's clearly wrong. I said Macho, not SpongeBob, <laughs> but okay, you get the point. So let's learn about functions. So let me tell you what functions does. So this is the syntax for functions. Like this is how you write. Def means you start a function. You could write any name, like, so I write dog. These parentheses I'll talk about later, but I'll just add them now. And then I could print dog go, right? And then if I run this, what happens is that it runs the whole file. So now if I run the file, it means this has been recorded. The function has been recorded. So if I run it, it says doggo. So let's do something funky. What do you think would happen if I print and then I put dog there? What do you think that will happen? It's gonna print this whole thing. Like, like the uh, doggo. What do you mean? What's it gonna? It's just gonna print doggo. It's actually gonna print nothing. Oh wait. Oh, it is gonna print doggo. Oh, sorry, my bad. But okay, so. The reason why doggo got printed is because we called this function. But then why is there none? Like for example, if I do dog, it prints doggo. Mm -hmm. But then if I do print dog, it does nothing. The reason is because this function returns nothing. Basically, this is what, what 
what's really happening is returning nothing. Mm -hmm. But you can return like for example four. You know, print print is actually nothing related to what you're gonna output in terms of your function. This is just like a side effect, yeah. right? So imagine if you do. Oh wait, I gotta run it. And then okay, so print dog. So what do you think will happen if I do this? Is it gonna print doggo and four? Let's try. Yes, it is. Okay, cool. So basically, it returns. You can return stuff. You can also return. What does it strings. mean to return? It means like to. Imagine like to after you press that function, it passes on a value mm -hmm. so that another function can use it or something else. Okay. Yeah. So how do you use these things that you pass on? Good question. You didn't ask me, but <laughs> good, good question. <laughs> Here's what we call parameters, right? So in your SpongeBob, we could add parameters. So what parameters are are variables, kind of, but on functions. Like for example, you could say. Uh, Parameter. Okay, let's just do something easy like like hello just to show you that you know, so what happens is Let's add hello. Let's see what happens Okay, then SpongeBob Now you could add stuff into it Like let's just add a random number five. Mm -hmm. What do you think it's gonna print? Is it gonna add five to the end of hi my name is SpongeBob? Yes, that's right You also have to know the operator comparison operators which is like, for example, it's five. So for equals, uh, big distinction. There's a distinction between like the one equal sign and two equal sign. Mm -hmm. One equal sign is when you want to assign something to something. Two equal sign is you're comparing. Like, is four equals four? Yeah. So what do you think will happen if I do SpongeBob ASDF? It will return true. Yes. Okay. What if I do five? What do you think this will happen? It will return false. Yes, okay, what if I do... And my plus 6 minus 4 minus 2. What if I do this? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what do you think It'll this will happen? It'll still be false. No, it's true, dude. What? What Just do your math. 5 oh, minus shit. 1 is 4. <laughs> plus 6 yeah, is 4. <laughs> so I asked him to write a simple function that requires if statements and operators. Let me do some squats. <laughs> Fitness channel. Fitness channel. Hmm, it is negative one. That's good. Ooh. It's dope, it's dope. Wow. Wow, good job, good job. whisper to my channel uh, all right guys so I'm actually trying to teach him recursion without him knowing it's recursion so let's see if he uh, if, if he gets it right I'd say probably not but we'll see <laughs> such confidence booster <laughs> you, you heard that <laughs> Joma, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's check it out. Dude, you can't do that, man. It works. <laughs> Up to six. <I'm> ex <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, technically it does work, yes. But 
I mean, what if you want to do seven, right? It's, oops. So yeah. Yeah, it doesn't even return anything, dude. <laughs> All right, okay. It's okay. Um, it's okay, I didn't expect you to to get it because you know it's you really had to think outside of the box and stuff like that but uh no worries this is very creative i actually like this so basically what i want to teach you is recursion so it means you could call the function within the function as in you're going to call yourself all right so i'm not going to teach you all this because we're actually running out of time so we're going to end it here but i'm just going to show you real quick what the code looks like all right so if n equals zero turn one and then, uh, so basically what I did here is, oops, I did the two initial number for zero and one, and then else what you wanna do is you wanna add the previous one and the previous previous one, right? Mm -hmm. So all you do is n minus one plus Fibonacci n minus two, and then that's it. Very simple, all right. And then if you do fib six, interesting. I forgot to put return. And then if you put fib six, it gives you 13, seven, 21. There you go, there you have it. All right, I hope, uh, I hope you enjoyed the small tutorial that we cramped them into 30 minutes. But uh, yeah, you did well. I mean, we learned a lot of things. We learned functions, we learned variables, parameters, and you know, conditions. So this is pretty good. Hopefully next time you'll be able to make a web app on your own. Yeah. Next tutorial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So in case you don't know, I'm gonna maybe start doing some uh, Python courses that I'll sell. Uh, I don't know how much yet. I still have to refine it. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited because I think finally it's gonna be something very, very useful for you guys. And also it can help me pay him. <laughs> yeah, because, expensive. Yes, because he's quite expensive and I need to start paying this guy to make my videos for me. All right, cool. So I hope you like this video. If you like it, don't forget to like and subscribe and also press the bell button for notification. And also, it's Matt Cho, so don't forget to follow his channel. Somewhere. Yeah, I don't do yeah. that. I don't do All that. Right. I, I usually right. just black the screen after, mm -hmm. right? So usually it just goes like,